the girls, my name's Dan. Welcome back to The Forge. In this episode of Trust Me, I'm a Blacksmith, we are going to be dressing the faces on some of these hammers. I'm raffling this hammer off as part of this video series, and also this is the second prize hammer. This is a Second World War British engineer style hammer, so you can get your hands on this one for second place, and this hammer for first place. And if you'd like to get one of these hammers, stay tuned to the end, and I'll tell you how you can. Okay, I've recently made these hammers in a video where I made them by hand and I showed you guys and girls at home how to do that as well. We're going to move on to the next stage which is dressing or facing the hammers. In this video I'm going to cover all the processes, steps, tools and everything you might need to know to dress a hammer, be that a brand new store bought one, something that you've made or a second hand one that you found in a thrift market. Dressing or facing a hammer is a relatively simple task. Basically what we're trying to achieve is a nice clean surface that isn't going to mar, ding or dent your work in an unsightly way. And the way we do this, using a process of grinding, either using files, rasps, etc, sandpaper or a grinder or linisher or some sort of belt grinder, we modify the faces in such a way that they give us that desired effect. Dressing or facing is one of two things. The first is initially what we want to do is we want to take the surface of our hammer up to a nice condition so that it doesn't leave any marks in our work. Uh, and I'm going to go through that process here but I'm also going to go through the process of creating a hammer face and there are all different types of hammer faces um, and how we grind them in is very important but also what we're trying to achieve with that ground face is also very important. So I'm just going to run over a couple of different types of hammers and the faces I've ground into them and why I've done that. So initially when we have a hammer, this is a rounding hammer for example, one of the faces here is flat, this is like a planishing forging face and the other one is a rounding face. And most forging faces want to be like this one. This has got a slight crown, so it's got a slight radius to itself. I don't know if you can see that very well or not, but it, take, it radiuses out from the center where there's a tiny weeny flat spot and then radiuses out to the edge. And that's called a crown. And we do that so that we can get nice smooth overlaps of hammer marks and keep our work nice and straight at the same time. Here with this rounding face, I use this for drawing out because it's so much more of an aggressive radius. It focuses the pressure from the hammer into a small area and therefore increases the pressure on that area and pushes it out nicely. So we use that face for forging. So this hammer here has got two different faces um, and I've ground both those in with two different jobs in mind. But I'm always making sure that the surface of those faces is good for forging so there's no uh, scars or scratches or scuffs in there uh, from any of the previous grinding processes or the forging process and I make sure that we have some nice transfers from the edge of the face so we're not going to leave any nasty dings or marks in our work. A hammer like this one like we're going to work on today has a peen and these same processes relate to this, uh, the making of a hammer like this as they do to making that rounding hammer. We want to make sure that we've got a little bit of a crown on our forging face. Now for this hammer here um, I've got um, a normal forging crown. I'll show you what you can. Uh, some of the Scandies have quite a, a radius face on the front and that will uh, give you slightly different characteristics when forging. But nice transitions from the side of the hammer into the face and that crown that rolls up into the centre. And then also a nice transition here on the uh, cross pin. Uh, but again, this is a drawing out face designed to help you pull material in a direction. And here with our Scandi, we've got quite an aggressive radius on the crown there. Hopefully you can see that. And this is allowing us to get a bit more contact, so contact with the edge of the hammer on the anvil so that if we were putting bevels in or something like that, it would help us forge those bevels in. So, um, but it also helps you overlap those hammer blows nicely so you get a nice finish. Also, nice radius on the side there. So exactly the same principle with a hammer like this as within our check hammers that we're making at the minute. Right, enjoy the video, I'm going to show you how to do the grind. When it comes to grinding or when it comes to dressing your faces, you're going to need to get yourself some tools and there's a couple of ways you can achieve the same process. I'm not going to go over all of them in this video, I'm just going to explain them very quickly now. Now you could hot rasp these and there's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, what I would uh, do is find yourself an old farrier's rasp, if it's new it's probably going to be quite sharp. Farrier's rasps tend to have two faces on, they have a very coarse face 
and then they have a less coarse face compared to things like uh, your standard bastard files or whatever uh, and your fine files or your finishing work files these files are very coarse they're even coarser than some of the very very coarse big bastard files that you get so you get your material nice and hot and you could take this up to a forging temperature lock it in a vise and then just start rasping those corners and sharp edges off and I'm going to go over all of this in a bit more detail but it, this is your only option this and a wire brush will get the job done pretty good. Alternatively, you could get yourself some files. Now, uh, a, a, a good set of files like this one here, these are, these are engineers' files, uh, a good set of files like this is gonna set you back a few quid, um, but you can pick them up at a reasonable price, and having a couple of these files in the workshop is never a bad thing anyway. Um, and a file like this can also achieve a really nice finish, especially if you take a bit of time and then move on to some wet and dries or some emery cloth or some sandpaper of some description. You can use a file like this to get a really nice, good, a really good finish on your work. I predominantly use an angle grinder for my uh, grinding processes in the workshop, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I'm finding it a bit, it's a bit knackering, a bit time consuming, and it's very expensive to buy a collection of discs like this, but I do use them on a day-to-day -day basis, so they're definitely worth having. Um, I will be using a four and a half inch grinder, this one here and we will predominantly be using a variety of different discs in order to get the results that we're looking for. The boring bit. If you are going to be using an angle grinder, you need to keep yourself safe. They're nasty little things, and they can attack you on multiple levels. Number one thing that angle grinders like to do is bite you, and they will bite you if they get the opportunity. So make sure you're conscious of what you're doing and you take your time. But you also need to get some kind of hearing protection. Not only is the grinder very loud, but once you start cutting into the metal, especially with those harder discs, they will make a lot of noise. They're also gonna make lots of sparks and dust and all sorts of rubbish that they're gonna fire into the air. So you're gonna to need to get yourself some suitable safety glasses. Um, and you're gonna also have to get yourself, if you're gonna use an angle grinder, some sort of respirator. It's not just because the steels that we use are full of all sorts of wonderful metals that are mostly poisonous to human beings, but uh, they, the dust that is made from the breakdown of the discs, the cutting discs, the grinding discs, and also the flap discs is very, 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 very bad for you. So you need to be protecting your lungs as much as you possibly can. And you also shouldn't tamper with the guards or anything that you're angle grinder company has given you in order to protect you from yourself mostly also make sure the grinder's in good working condition if it was left outside in the rain overnight might not be a good idea using it right initially when i start a grind on a hammer i like to use a stone like this one to remove a lot of the scale and also if i need to hog out any material these tend to take off more material a bit quicker than the flap discs that I'm gonna go on to use. Now, if I need to take off a lot of material, uh, you can use a cutting disc a bit like this one uh, and remove quite a bit of material quite quickly as well with one of these, but just be careful, once you've cut it off, you can't put it back on again. Well, not very easily anyway. Okay, so initially what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove any high spots either using our cutting discs or our grinding stone. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on getting the face flat. Uh, I like to do this by doing uh, an initial grind in one direction and then coming 90 degrees to that grind and doing a similar kind of cut, taking it out of the vise, having a good look at it and then repeating that process. And this should get you somewhere close to flat, but if you do have any high spots, what you're gonna need to do is concentrate on those high spots and bring them down and just sort of work through the process of getting this nice and flat. Once you've got your face nice and flat, we're gonna put a chamfer on each one of the edges of this hammer face. Uh, quite an aggressive chamfer as well. It wants to be just under quarter of an inch, six mil uh, in, in width, and we're gonna go around all four sides. And then once we've taken that chamfer off on all four sides, we're gonna do the same with the actual corners of the square as well. And that's just gonna start developing our, uh, our crown. Should look something like this. Now I'm going to work on the peen. I'm going to lock it in the vise to do this. And exactly the same as before, we're going to put a very large chamfer in, about 45 to 30 degrees as previous. We're going to do this on both sides. Just give you something a 
look a bit like this. In using the vise to support your work, we're gonna take the corners off of our, our new chamfers and then we're gonna blend those corners in um, and basically just start developing a pin. A lot like what we would do when we're forging. And now I'm just gonna take the scale off the back of these curves. After using the grinding stone and cutting disc to get the shape in, I like to move on to one of these 40 grit flap discs. Now these will remove a lot of material as well. Uh, they're quite coarse, um, they're quite good, and they do give a really good finish. So it's quite nice to be able to do, get some of that initial detail work in with one of these. So I'm gonna set the vise up so I can grab the hammer uh, between the cheeks and the jaws. This way I can support the work. And I'm just gonna start blending all the sharp edges in from that very heavy stone. And then on the face, I'm gonna work from the center back out towards our chamfers. And then this way, it's gonna to start developing that crown. Okay, so what we're aiming to do is get a nice radius from the center that slowly comes back to about, I don't know, about six mil, quarter of an inch from one edge, and then just rolls over nicely so that we get a really nice edge. And this way, we're not gonna get any sharp corners or any dings or anything. And you can spend as much time as you like using the 40 grit or a file or whatever now to get this shape in because the better this is now, the less messing around you have to do later. And exactly the same here on the back end, just making sure that's nice and even. Um, I need to take the corners off of here, but I will show you that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just put a time lapse in of me going through with the other grits and just getting this looking all nice and dapper. And then we're uh, pretty much ready to start doing the heat treat. Once I've got the shape in, I like to move on to one of these 80 grits. I like to get all the scratches out from the 40 grit and these, uh, these leave a very nice finish as well, but they'll still leave some scratches in. So in order to get those scratches out, I'm gonna move over to a 120 grit. This is slightly used, this one. However, again, they leave a really nice finish and I like to use them until they get all of the scratches out. It's important to take your time here and just work and blend everything in and get everything looking nice and tidy and smooth. Remove all of the scratches from the previous grit. And uh, yeah, just it doesn't take long to do this, but it, it, is, it is worth taking your time over. After the 120, I like to use the Scotch Bright discs. They come in a coarse, medium, and fine. Um, they leave a very, very good finish on your hammers, which is more than acceptable for the forging process. I'll show you a hammer that's been ground already. So this is a hammer that's been finished with Scotch Bright, and as forging faces go, this is perfectly acceptable. You don't need to take it any further than this, um, but I do like to get them up to a mirror finish when they go out to customers, so I'll be doing that after we've done the heat treat. Okay, so both of these have now been heat treated and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab uh, the flap discs with the um, with a scotch bright on, I'm gonna take off any of the coloring, and then I'm going to use a polishing mop set to bring these up to a nice mirror finish. Okay, this little set of discs comes with a few little bits in it. Comes with uh, two lots of different soap to put on your mop or your disc, uh, and one is like a coarse and one's like a fine, so one's the initial polish and the other one's, I think it's the blue one's the finishing polish. And then this is a used mop. I've got a new one in here that I haven't had to use yet. These last quite a long time considering the, uh, the price of them. Um, but in this kit you get uh, one of these and you get two of the, you get a medium coarseness and a fine scotch bright as well. And quite a nice little, little kits there if you've got no other way of polishing.
Okay, so here are both of the hammers all finished now and uh, you can see that you can get quite an impressive finish if you spend a bit of time doing a little bit of polishing with the right bit of kit. Now they're not very expensive, those polishing mops, I think they come in at about 20 pounds for the whole kit and you get two of the scotch bites as well. So these are all hardened and everything now and they just need the handles fitting on them but they are looking pretty cool even if I do say so myself. Okay, and just very quickly, do you need to bring these up to a mirror finish? Not at all. You could get away with that rasping and then wire brushing finish. It is perfectly adequate for forging with. What we're trying to achieve here is a surface that's smooth, even without any scores in it or anything like that, that isn't going to dent all your work up and leave horrible marks in it. Uh, and if you do go to the full length and process of bringing up to a mirror finish, you're going to get that. So that's, uh, but it is going to come off. It isn't going to last forever, unfortunately. Um, anyway, I'm going to leave the video there and sign off. Thank you so much for joining me. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, I'd like to say I've enjoyed making these hammers, but they've been mega stressful. I'm quite busy and for some reason, I've been unable to film any of these videos very easily. So anyway, hopefully this one came together really well. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you'd like to win one of these hammers, uh, or one of these hammers, or this hammer, this is the other hammer, this is the British engineer style hammer. It's almost like a dog's head. It's based off a British Second World War hammer design. If you'd like to get your hands on one of those, you can by going over to my Etsy and buying a raffle ticket. Uh, I can't remember how much the raffle tickets are. That shows how clever I am. Anyway, the raffle will be announced this Saturday. I'll put the date down here somewhere for you guys and girls to know when exactly I'm gonna draw the raffle. And sorry, you've had to wait for that. I will explain that probably in the raffle, but it is coming. It will be this Saturday and we will be doing a live from the workshop. Whether or not I'll be doing any forging is yet to be seen. I was gonna try and use a hand crank blower. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to get hold of one and I was gonna make, anyway, it didn't work out. I'm gonna stop talking. <laughs> the link to my Etsy is in the description. Also, if you do purchase any items whatsoever until the draw, you'll also get your name entered into the raffle. Right, that's everything. I'm going to leave the video there. Thank you so much for joining me. I do hope you enjoyed the video. Remember, if you did, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you are a subscriber, why not try ringing that bell for notifications? It'll tell you every time I make a video. I pretty much make a video once a week and with the lockdown, I've been able to get a few more out here and there, which has been great fun. Um, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you want to help support the channel in any way, shape or form, there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can go over and check out my Instagram and also go and check out the Etsy, get those raffle tickets and also all sorts of tools, merchandise and all that cool, crazy good stuff. Um, there's a link to that down in the description. Also my Instagram, there's a link to that in the description as well. My website's there and some other bits and bobs. So go and check out everything you saw there. I will be putting this hammer on a handle this week as well. And I'm gonna try and get a video out this week of that too. There is a heat treating video, which I've pretty much filmed alongside this one. This is why it's taken so bloody long. Um, but yeah, that's everything. Thank you for joining. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. I will leave a link to a video that YouTube thinks is best for you. This is a link to the most recently uploaded video. And down here will be the previous episode in this series. Hopefully you have been enjoying it. Or the next one, I'm not sure. Anyway, hopefully you've been enjoying this little series of me hand forging a hammer. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.